we'll try and see how this works again uh, we'll try the live feed on Facebook again the YouTube crowd still with us and uh, staying with us while we were muddling through our our internet issues and so again we welcome you to our broadcast and thank you for being a part of what we're doing here in Re at Renewed Covenant Fellowship. We do want to uh, uh, encourage you. Hello, Miss Su Suzanne. Appreciate you joining us tonight. Uh, we do want to encourage you that if you are in the Salisbury, North Carolina area, we do have Sabbath services tomorrow uh, at 2 p.m. Uh, here in our in our home location. And we are right now praying about moving into a permanent facility of uh, we're having a, an, an event coming up on February the 8th, uh, the Joy of Sabbath Oneg Fellowship, and uh, we're hoping, uh, praying Father will allow us to move into this location. Uh, it'll be a permanent location where we can grow. Uh, our home is getting kind of full. Hello, Miss Peggy. Hello, bro Brother Jackson. Appreciate you joining us tonight. Appreciate you guys being on. Hello, Brother Paul. Appreciate you being here with us tonight. Uh, as I was saying, we are praying about going into a permanent facility and leaving from meeting in our home uh, into a rented facility. Uh, we have a, 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 a facility in Spencer, North Carolina, the Spencer Women's Club. Um, we actually was part of a church plant there years ago that worked out of that building. And uh, we have the opportunity to go into that facility again. And uh, so if you would pray with us, uh, that Father would, uh, would bless the effort and we would uh, be able to move forward. Uh, we do. Uh, we're getting kind of crowded in our home, and uh, we are. We're not out of room yet, but it is kind of, uh, kind of tight when everybody shows up. And so we're just hoping that Father will allow us to uh, to grow and to and to move as uh, as He sees fit. Hello, Miss Crystal. Thank you for joining us tonight. Appreciate you being a part of the broadcast. Uh, we do want to continue to pray for those that are that are uh, in uh, in need. Uh, continue to pray for our our nation. Continue to pray for those uh, that they uh, others that they will come into the faith, uh, that we can lead others into a true walk and a true relationship with Yeshua Messiah. Uh, we also want to pray for each other. Keep uh, keep each other in in your prayers. Also, we're going to be headed to Oklahoma on February the ninth. Uh, that night to Feb of uh, after Sabbath, uh, going to Nebraska, Oklahoma, Nebraska to pick up our our daughter. Uh, and uh, so uh, I do pray for us. Uh, I see that uh, that Kansas is getting more snow, and uh, we we praise the Lord for that. You know, we uh, we we miss that. Uh, I know people don't like blizzards, but out in this part of the country in North Carolina, they have no idea what a blizzard is, and uh, we kind of we kind of like them because we know that we can stay in and and eat junk and and sort of you know just watch TV and stay by the fire. So. Um, uh, Miss Crystal, you guys stay warm out there, and uh, so we uh, pray. Father richly, richly blesses you. Well, we're going to pray tonight. We're no, I forgot to turn it on. Well, I forgot to turn turn the microphone on, so all all my YouTube crowd ain't heard heard a word I've said. So we're just going to basically we're just going to uh, you know it's te technology sort of sort of goes over my head some sometimes, and I forget to turn the microphone on. So. Uh, we'll just have to use the YouTube, I mean the uh, uh, the uh, uh, internet video or the Facebook video to go on uh, on YouTube. We'll just use the other as a backup. So, uh, but uh, we do uh, appreciate you being here with us. It, uh, we're just kind of confused tonight, okay? We're just sort of flying by the seat of our proverbial pants, and uh, 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 we just, you, you spend time pre uh, preparing and preparing and preparing, and and then nothing goes right. Can I get a good amen uh, out out of that? Uh, and so we're just going to do the best we can tonight and try to muddle through it as best we can. Uh, we're going to blow the shofar, and hopefully that'll work right. Amen. And then we're going to pray and ask the Father's blessing on the on the meeting, sing a song, uh, and then we're going to get right into the teaching. We're continuing our study on the covenant uh, and uh, getting into uh, part three, actually, of the covenant. And this is probably going to go uh, for quite a quite a few more more weeks before we can get in into all of it. We may get through part two tonight, uh, and we may not. We'll just have to see. But. Uh, we are uh, uh, excited for the opportunity the Father's given us. So we're going to blow the shofar, and we're going to get the uh, Sabbath started. So Shabbat Shalom to all of you out there, and we pray Father will richly bless you on this day. <laughs> We are ready to 
to pray. And so let's, uh, let's go to the Father in prayer tonight and ask the Lord's blessing on the meeting. Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness and mercy. We thank you for, for the love you give us. We thank you for grace. We thank you for Yeshua Messiah who gave his life as a ransom for our sin. We ask you, Father, that you'd meet with us tonight. Do that which needs to be done and use us for thy glory. May the message and the broadcast be a blessing to those that are out there. And most of all, may you be glorified by all that we say and do. For it is in the name of Yeshua Messiah we pray. Amen and amen. Well, we're going to go right to a song. We're going to sing Psalm 95 tonight. Psalm 95, I put words or music to this uh, psalm several years ago. We sang this in Garden City. And uh, so our Garden City people, if you're uh, watching tonight, you can sing right along with us. Psalm 95, oh come, let us sing unto the Lord. Psalm 95, oh come, let us sing unto the Lord. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3. Oh come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joy. Let us sing unto the Lord, Psalm 95. And so you can sing that anytime you get down and you get in the, in the dumps, then you can open up the Psalms and you can sing those Psalms each and every day. Well, let's go uh, back into our study tonight. We are going to sort of a, do, a back, do a sort of a recap uh, to bring us up to speed. We uh, were talking about originally when we started uh, with the study, we were looking at who is Israel and why are they Israel. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, Israel are those who will join in covenant with Yahweh. And, and then, of course, when you, when you talk about who is Israel and those that join in covenant, you have to ask what is the covenant, and you have to open that up and, uh, and lay that out. And, and I'm convinced that most Christians, most believers uh, that are in religion and Christianity and those that are believers in Jesus Christ, they, they have no clue as to what the covenant really is and what is required of those who are in covenant with God, Elohim, Yahweh. And uh, we just uh, are, are taught in Christianity, well, just, you know, just love Jesus and uh, and uh, believe in him and you'll you'll go to heaven when you die and we totally miss the the things that Yahweh has commanded uh, and instructed that those that join in covenant with him and in agreement with him uh, that we are to do and and so we talked about that the children of Israel are those that agree with the covenant. And the covenant is simply the pledge or the allegiance of, or the alliance of friendship. Uh, basically, it's a treaty to end hostility. Uh, and Yahweh made his covenant uh, uh, all the way back. I believe the covenant was all the way back at the beginning of, of creation. I believe that's when the covenant was was originated. But when Moses is taking the children of Israel out of uh, out of Egypt, uh, they've been in paganism and they've been in false god worship for all these years. And many of them uh, had not heard of the covenant and did not know who Yahweh was. And they they had had heard of 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 Adam and and they had heard of Noah and Enoch and and they had heard of Shem and. And all of those things, but and and they they had heard of Joseph of surely, and of course they knew uh, who Israel was because they knew their history. But as far as uh, the the covenant and the instructions given by God the Father, 
they were uh, uh, alienated in many of those areas. And so here we see that Yahweh is, is revisiting them and showing them the covenant that he made with Abraham and that he made with Isaac and that he made with Jacob and then bringing it into realization with the children of Israel uh, coming into the, into the wilderness journey, coming into Mount Sinai. Now, I'm a firm believer that had Israel not broken the covenant with the golden calf incident, that they would have been ushered into the promised land. I mean, they would have spent the, the year preparing and setting up the tabernacle and all the things as far as the worship goes, and they would have been ushered into the promised land if they would not have broken the covenant, also if they would have not, the spies had not brought back the evil report. But because of that, they were forced to wander in the wilderness for 40 years uh, and missed out uh, the blessing of going into the promised land, all of those that came out of Egypt 20 years old and up. And so those that agree with the covenant, those are the ones uh, that are Israel and those are the ones who are part of Yahweh's family or those that agree with the covenant. Uh, but then, but then the, the second part is that not only is Israel and the believer or, or the children of God those that agree with the covenant, but the second thing is it's those that enter into covenant with Yahweh. Now, you can agree with it all day long. You say, oh, yeah, 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 that's what, what, that's what we're supposed to do, but I just ain't going to do that. You can agree with the terms of a contract. But if you don't sign that paper and enter into that agreement, then you're not in that agreement. You can agree with it all day long. But if you don't sign the agreement, then you're not in covenant with that contract. And so the second part that we're going to deal with tonight is that those that enter into the covenant of Yahweh are the ones who are the children of Yahweh or the children of God. Now, we're, I, want us to, I want us to read, I want us to go to Isaiah 56. And I want us to look at Isaiah 56, but I'm going to go back to Exodus chapter 20, and I'm going to spend a little bit of time on what the contents of the covenant were. Now, you know as well as I do, any time that you get ready to sign a contract and anything like that, you read the details. You read the terms of the contract. Uh, it's, it's quite foolish uh, for us to sign an agreement or sign a contract that we don't know what's inside of it. And so therefore, anytime you, you have that, a home loan, a car loan, a bank loan, or anything like that, and they, they bring out all this paperwork. If you've never bought a house before, you've never seen paperwork before, amen? Uh, but nevertheless, uh, they bring out all this paperwork, and it's, it's really wise if you at least peruse over it to sort of get an idea as to what you're signing. Well... There, there is a covenant or a contract here that Yahweh is setting up, and in that contract, there are terms that go with it. There's contents within the contract, and these terms are found in the book of Exodus, but I want to read Isaiah 56 to begin with uh, as sort of our springboard text to, to get us into what we're talking about tonight uh, concerning those that enter into the covenant. Now, Isaiah 56, verses 1 through 8, we're going to just read verses 1 through 8. And it says, Thus saith Yahweh, Keep ye judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Neither let the son of the stranger that had joined himself to Yahweh speak, saying, Yahweh hath utterly separated me from his people, Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. For thus saith Yahweh unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbaths and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant, even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters, and I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to Yahweh to serve him and to love the name of Yahweh, to be his servants, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant, even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar, 
for mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. And so here we see, uh, here in Isaiah, we see the prophecy concerning uh, the strangers coming in and becoming a part of Yahweh, being a part of the family of God. Uh, and here he says there that even the even the eunuchs and the strangers that keep his Sabbaths and do the things that please him and take hold of the covenant that he will give them in his house and within his walls a place and a name better than a name of a son and a daughter. It'd be a greater name than that of a son and a daughter. And, and so when we look at that, we see that that God's people are those that enter into the covenant with Yahweh. Now I want us to go back to Exodus chapter number 20. We're getting uh, close to this in our parashah readings and our Torah studies uh, for this week. Uh, we're just uh, just another week out from, from getting into the uh, contract or the terms of, of the covenant. But when we look at here in uh, chapter, actually chapter number 19, uh, here we see that, uh, that uh, Yahweh is speaking uh, uh, to Moses and Moses delivers uh, the, the message to Israel concerning uh, Yahweh's plan and, and Yahweh's covenant. And it says there in chapter 19 and verse number five, he says, now therefore, if you will obey my voice and indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And so from there we go right into the terms of the contract. Now I'm not going to go into all the details because these chapters are quite extensive, but I do want to focus a little bit of attention on chapters 20 through 23 because this would be the book of the covenant, okay? This is the book of the covenant. This is the one that Moses took in chapter number 24 and he sprinkled it with blood. He sprinkled the people with blood and he ratified the covenant with, with blood there at Sinai. And it's this book, the book of the covenant. It's, this, it's a separate book. Of course, it's, it's included into the writings of Exodus, but it's a separate book set aside as the contract between God, Elohim, Yahweh, and his people. Simply put, it is the contract. And so when we look at, hello, Pardales, Part appreciate you guys joining us tonight. And so when we look, of course, chapter 20 uh, is the Ten Commandments. And the Ten Commandments set the whole contract in, in motion. And it's the foundation for, uh, for the contract. Remember what Yeshua said uh, there in the Gospels. He said, uh, uh, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and mind, and to love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two hang all the commandments and all the law of the prophets. Okay? And so, hello, Miss, uh, uh, Miss Angie. Shabbat shalom to you too. Uh, and so we see the foundational principles of, of the contract and of the covenant are found right here in the Ten Commandments. And so we're going to read through those uh, real quickly. So if you've got your Bibles, Exodus chapter 20, uh, and verse number one. I'm going to try to preach fast because i got a lot of ground to cover. If you'll listen fast, the joy of this is you can punch rewind or you can watch it again uh, at a later date. You can even go on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, Renewed Covenant Fellowship, and you can watch it on there. By the way, share this on your page right now. Share this with your friends so they can be involved and, and, and uh, also become a YouTube subscriber. That way when we put a new teaching on, you'll get a notice in your email that we've just posted a new teaching. So Exodus 20, verse number one, and Elohim spake all these words saying, I am Yahweh thy Elohim, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other mighty ones before me, no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for I, Yahweh, am El thy Elohim, and a jealous L. I'm going to stop right there just for a second. It's a sin for us to bow down to crosses, crucifixes, statues, or even men. We bow down to them. We bow down to them in worship and in adoration. It's, it's wrong for us to bow down to a cross, pray up to a, uh, to a man-made altar, pray up to a, to a cross, uh, because the cross don't save. Amen. The cross was a tool that was used to crucify our, our master, but the only thing that saves is the blood of Yeshua Messiah. It's the only thing that saves. If the blood is not applied, 
then there is no salvation, period. Zilch, zip, nada. Just an extra message in there, amen? Verse number uh, five, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them, for I, Yahweh, thy Elohim, am a jealous El, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. That's a very interesting part right there, amen? He says that thou shalt not take the name of Yahweh thy Elohim in vain, for Yahweh will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh thy Elohim. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days Yahweh made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rest in the seventh day. Wherefore, Yahweh blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. The Sabbath day begins Friday night at sundown. And that means we're to cease buying and selling. We're to cease going out to eat. We're to cease going out to concerts. We're to cease going out to, to hockey games and basketball games and football games. We're to cease from those things. And we're to rest and we're to focus our attention upon Yahweh, uh, uh, upon the uh, Elohim, our Savior, and focus upon him and, and him Him alone and remove the distractions of the world and focus only strictly upon him. Uh, verse, number, verse number 12. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which Yahweh thy Elohim giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill or murder. Thou shalt not murder. Okay, there is a time for killing. But thou shalt not murder. Look up that, that word, Strong's 7523. Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor, thy, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And all the people saw the thunderings and lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not Elohim speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for Elohim has come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces that ye sin not. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where Elohim was. And so here we see the beginnings of the covenant, the foundational principles of the covenant that Yahweh laid out for his people Israel. Now, uh, the covenant continues with uh, these, uh, uh, what I would call diverse instructions or, or different or diversities of instructions. Now, many people could look at this and they could, they could refer or reflect back to what Yeshua said in the Gospels and they use the terminology, the moral law. Uh, I always wondered what part of God's law was immoral uh, if there was a moral law. But nevertheless, uh, this would be just different or diversities of instructions for God's people to live by. Okay? So as we continue on, I want you to take note and I want you to pay attention to what we're saying, okay? And I may end up reading all, all of this because it's very important because these are practical applications and practical instructions for us to live our daily life by, okay? Many of the laws in our country and many of the laws in our land are based upon these next three chapters in the Bible, okay? So pay close, close attention, okay? So in verse number 20, 22, it says, And Yahweh said unto Moses, Thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. Ye shall not make with me mighty ones of silver, neither shall ye make unto you mighty ones of gold. Right there. No, no images of gold. No images of silver, no gods of gold, gods of silver, no statues. Well, that just throws the Catholic Church and, and all, all of religion out the door, amen. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me and shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings. Not an altar, not an altar that's fashioned with a tool, but an altar of earth and thy peace offerings, thy sheep and thine oxen and all thy, in all places where I record my name, I will come unto thee and I will bless thee, okay? You can only sacrifice and, and, and only give a sacrificial offering at a certain place, okay? You couldn't give it in your backyard. You're supposed to give it at a place that, that Yahweh was to put his name, okay? 
Now, that's my dog saying amen right there, okay? That's my dog say, saying amen. And so when you look at the word of God and you look at the scriptures, you see here that Yahweh is given explicit instructions concerning his commandments and the things that are required and things that are instructed for, for God's, God's people. And so here it says, verse 24, An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings, and thy peace offerings, thy sheep, and thine oxen. In all places where I record my name, I will come unto thee, and I will bless thee. And if thou wilt make an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of hewn stone, for if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. Okay? Neither shalt thou go up by steps unto mine altar, that thy nakedness be not discovered thereon. Altar wasn't supposed to be way up here, okay? Altar was what, what, what was a certain dimension and a certain style. And uh, not, not altars of gold and, and altars of silver, but altars of earth or altars of stone. So, 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 so there are specific instructions. Chapter 21. Now these are the judgments which thou shalt set before them. And here in the beginnings of the chapter is the uh, law and the con commandments concerning servants, okay? And I know, I know we're not in slavery. I know there's not slavery in this, in, in this country. But there is servitude. If you work for an employer, you are that servant, okay? Even though uh, they don't own us, uh, our, sometimes I feel like our employers do own us, Amen. But nevertheless, they don't own us, but these are the instructions concerning servants. Here in chapter 21, verses 1, verses 1 through, uh, through 10, uh, verse 1 through 11. Okay, so I'm not going to get into those. Uh, those are basically, those are concerning slaves uh, and servants and those that will uh, submit themselves and basically give themselves over to, uh, over to their master for a lifetime of service and a lifetime of duty. Chapter number 21, verse 12. He that smiteth a man so that he die shall be surely put to death. One of the greatest tragedies in our country was when we got rid of the death penalty for, for crimes that were committed uh, su such as murder and, and, and rape and those types of things. We got rid of capital punishment and we violated God's law. It says uh, he shall surely be put to death. And if a man lie not in wait, but Elohim deliver him into his hand, then I will appoint thee a place whither he shall flee. Here we're going to see the, the, uh, the, <clears throat> the teaching of the cities of refuge uh, coming up later on. But if a man come, verse 14, come presumptuously upon his neighbor to slay him with guile, thou shalt take him from mine altar that he may die. Okay, So there was the death penalty for those that committed uh, such heinous, heinous crimes. Verse, verse 15, watch this. And he that smiteth his father, or hitteth, hitteth his, uh, hits his father or mother, shall surely be put to death. That's a violation of the fifth commandment. Verse number 16, he that stealeth a man, that's kidnapping, and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. Kidnappers and those that take people and steal people and sell them as slaves, they're to be put to death. Verse 17, he that curseth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. Verse 18, if him, that, that's why it's important, folks, that we follow the commandments of, of Yahweh because there's blessing that comes with it. Remember what he said there in Deuteronomy 11, uh, a blessing if you obey and a curse if you disobey. And so there's a blessing that comes, and uh, our, our Heavenly Father is trying to explain to us and show us how, how this is to be transpired and what this is to look look like. Verse 18, if men strive together and one smite another with a stone or with his fist and he die not but keepeth his bed, if he rise again and walk abroad upon his staff, then shall, the, uh, then shall he that smote him be quit or be released. Only he shall pay for the loss of his time and shall cause him to be thoroughly healed. That's the law of restitution. Basically taking responsibility for your actions. If you hit someone and you do damage to them, uh, you you break a tooth, you uh, you do a bodily harm to them, you should be responsible for their medical expenses. That's just right there in in the in the scriptures. You shouldn't have to sue anybody for that. That should be our responsibility to do that. Verse twenty: If a man smite his servant 
or is made with a rod and he die under his hand, he shall be surely punished. Notwithstanding, if he continue a day or two, he shall not be punished for he is his money. Verse 22, if men strive and hurt a woman with child so that her fruit depart from her and yet no mischief follow, she shall, uh, uh, he shall be surely punished according as the woman's husband will lay upon him and he shall pay as the judge is determined. So here we see <coughs> laws, instructions, commandments that go right along with the covenant. These are basic instructions for conducting oneself with society, conducting oneself with their neighbor, conducting oneself with their heavenly father. Okay, And so we can continue on reading those. I'm, I'm just going to peruse through them. Uh, uh, verse 23, uh, this is the woman that uh, was injured with, uh, with uh, child uh, and her, her child uh, died. Uh, verse 23, if any mischief follow, then thou shalt give life for life. You know, it's amazing that our country... Uh, in our in our in our country, the law is kind of uh, kind of strange because uh, you can abort a, a child uh, up to a certain number of weeks when that child could sustain life. If the Democrats and if our Congress had its way about it, they would uh, be able to have abortion legal up to the day of birth. Um, but yet, if someone shoots or attacks the mother and the child dies, then the person is guilty of two murders. That's kind of a strange way of doing it. But nevertheless, abortion is still murder. It still is murder. Verse 24, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. Basically, this is just general instructions on how to conduct our life, okay? Uh, let's, let's look down to verse number uh, 28. If an ox gore a man... Or a woman that they die, then the ox shall be surely stoned, and his flesh shall not be eaten, but the owner of the ox shall be released, or shall be quit. But if the ox were wont to push with his horn in time past, and it had been testified to his owner, and he had not kept him in, but that he hath killed a man or woman, the ox shall be stoned, and his owner also shall be put to death. If if you own a dog, if you own an animal that is known to be aggressive, and you don't take control of that animal according to scripture, that animal does harm to someone, that animal is to be put to death, and so is the animal's owner. Boy, that would solve a lot of problems. What do you think, Brother Keith, them dogs that bit you out there on the, on the trail that, that day? That sure put a lot, of, uh, a lot of things to rest, I would say, if we'd get back to doing stuff like that. You say, well, that's just so harsh. No, that's 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 the covenant. That's that's the covenant that Yahweh made. It's harsh in our society, right? Exactly. Uh, Miss Peggy said the world is turned upside down because it follows not God's instruction. That's exactly right. That is exactly right. Uh, uh, look in uh, look in verse number thirty. If there be laid on him a sum of money, then he shall give for the ransom of, of his life whatsoever is laid upon him. And so there's responsibility. Whether he have gored a son or have gored a daughter, according to this judgment, it shall be done unto him. If the ox shall push a manservant or a maidservant, he shall give unto their master 30 shekels of silver, and the ox shall be stoned. Verse 33. If a man shall open a pit, or if a man shall dig a pit, dig a hole, and not cover it, and an ox or a donkey fall therein, the owner of the pit shall make it good and give money. Okay, and give money unto the owner of them, and the dead beast shall be his. And if one man's ox hurt another's that he died, then they shall sell the live ox and divide the money of it, and the dead ox also shall they divide. Or if it be known that the ox hath used uh, to push in time past, and his owner hath not kept him in, he shall surely pay ox for ox, and the dead shall be his own. So there, there we see... See, basically in instructions. Verse, uh, chapter 22. The, these are all instructions concerning uh, animals, farm animals, your beasts that you have control over, your horses, your cattle, uh, your, your animals, your oxen, your donkeys, your dogs, your cats, you know, all those types of things. Um, these are, are just plain and simple uh, instructions. Verse, verse 2, if a thief be found breaking up, and be smitten that he die, there shall no blood be shed for him. 
Somebody breaks into your house and they get caught breaking into your house, breaking up your house and attacking your house and, and you attack him and, and basically defend yourself and he dies, tough. No blood shall be shed for him. He got his just reward. That I, I think that uh, that rule and that law is still relevant today in our society. I think that's still uh, that's still happening. Uh, if the sun be risen upon him, there shall be blood shed for him. But for that, for he should make full restitution. If he have nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. If the theft be certainly found in his hand alive, whether it be ox or donkey or sheep, he shall restore double. These are just great instructions for us to live by. Okay. Verse 6, if fire break out and catch in thorns so that the stacks of corn or the standing corn of the field be consumed therewith, he that kindled the fire shall surely make restitution. Those laws are still relevant in our society today. You set a fire and you, you do damage to your neighbor's goods or your neighbor's uh, possessions, you're going to make restitution. Um, uh, let, let's, just, let's just look at, look at some others. Um, Let's see. Uh, let's see. Um, verse 14. If a man borrow aught of his neighbor and it be hurt or die, the owner thereof being not with it, he shall surely make it good. You borrow something from your neighbor and you break it, guess what? They get a new one. Ain't that right, Mr. Sure. Should. You borrow your neighbor's car? I need to borrow your car so I can go to work. And you wreck it? Guess what? You got to make it good. You got to get them another one to replace it. You run over your neighbor's dog. You need to re you, you need to make restitution. See, these are just simple standards by which to live by. Okay, simple standards with which to live by. Brother Keith, just something good. What do you say that? I, what do you? I, just taste. Just. Just tastes good, Brother Jacks. I, I, I can't make out what that says. T-A-S-T. -T. Okay. I'm going to move on with that one. Uh, here, here's a good one. <clears throat> verse, number uh, verse number 16. If a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. Now, how many men have a whole bunch of wives running around out there these days because of what of what they've done. If her father utterly refused to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. You know, that might stop a lot of junk too, amen? It might, yes, Miss Peggy, it is all about loving your neighbor. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. You know, this puts a whole new twist on that verse of scripture that uh, that Yeshua said. Whole new twist. Taste. Okay, I got that, brother, brother, brother David. Uh, look at verse number 18. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. But now we have witches' covens and satanic churches and things like that in our country all under 501c3 tax exemption status. Whosoever lieth with a beast shall surely be put to death. You wouldn't find that on the internet. Yep, that stuff would cease. He that sacrifice, sacrificeth unto any mighty one or in, unto any other god, save unto Yahweh only, he shall be utterly destroyed. Well, wouldn't it be great if we lived in a, in a covenant constitutional society? Wouldn't it be great if we lived in a Torah constitutional society? That our society was based upon the Torah. I ain't talking about, I ain't talking about Muslims, and I'm, I'm not talking about Islam. I'm talking about a covenant that Yahweh established for our benefit and for our good, to keep evil away and to uphold and extol righteousness. This is what the covenant is. This is what the original covenant was. It was how God's people were to conduct themselves in their daily lives. But we, we do not live in a Christian society. We live in a godless, wicked, ungodly nation that is allowing perversion and murder and abortion and, and sin and crime to run rampant, unchecked. Our lawmakers are just as guilty as, as the rest. 
And it is, it is beyond me how Yahweh has allowed this country to, to be established and establish itself. It, it's just beyond me. Notice what it says there in uh, verse number 21. Thou shalt neither vex a stranger nor oppress him, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Now this goes against every rabbinic Jewish tradition that's taught out there because they look at Gentiles as a plague and they forgot what Yahweh taught them about, their, uh, about being kind to strangers and enter entertaining strangers. Ye shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. Chapter 22, verse 23, If thou afflict them in any wise, and they cried all unto me, I will surely hear their cry, and my wrath shall wax hot, and I will kill you with the sword, and your wives shall be widows, and your children fatherless. Verse 25, if thou lend money to any of my people that is poor by thee, thou shalt not be to him as a user, neither shalt thou lay upon him usury. That means if you lend money to someone that's poor of, of God's people, no interest. No interest. Well, you know, we, we'd have a whole lot greater society if we followed that rule and, and those instructions. Verse 26, if thou at all take thy neighbor's raiment to pledge, thou shalt deliver it unto him by, the, by that the sun goeth down. For that is his covering only. It is his raiment for his skin, wherein shall he sleep. And it shall come to pass when he crieth unto me that I will hear, for I am gracious. Thou shalt not revile judges, nor curse the ruler of thy people. All you people out there that's cursing your president, and cursing your 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 sheriff and your leaders and your governors because you don't like them because of their political party, you don't like them because of their color, you don't like them because of their affiliation. The Bible's very clear right here, you shall not revile your judges nor curse the ruler of thy people. And pray for them. We may not agree with them, but yet you always place them there over us. And most, most likely he's placed wicked rulers over us because of our wickedness and because of our sin. Yes, Brother Keith, in the millennium, the Torah will be our constitution. That is exactly right. Verse 29, thou shalt not delay to offer the first of thy ripe fruits and of thy liquors, the firstborn of thy sons shalt thou give unto me. Likewise shalt thou do with, thy, with thine oxen and with thy sheep. Seven days it shall be with his damn on the eighth day thou shalt give it me. And ye shall be holy men unto me, neither shall ye eat any flesh that is torn of beasts in the field, ye shall cast it to the dogs. So, so I want us to move down to chapter number 23 uh, and look at uh, verse number, well, look, let's just continue on because this is going to get me where I need to go. Chapter 23, verse 1, Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thine hand up with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness, lying on the witness stand, perjuring yourself, bearing false witness. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to twist judgment. If you know something's right, stand for that which is right. You know something's true, stand for that which is true. Don't follow along the crowd. You know they're wrong and you, and you know their judgment is wrong. Don't follow along with the crowd just to be in the crowd. If you stand by yourself, you're, you're better off because you're standing with Yahweh instead of standing with the wicked. Neither shalt thou countenance uh, a poor man in his cause. If thou meet thine enemy's donkey or his donkey, uh, his ox or his donkey going astray, thou shalt surely bring it back to him again. Don't let it just keep wandering off. Don't, don't let their dog or their cat keep wandering off. Take it back to him. If thou see the donkey of him that hateth thee lying under his burden and wouldest forbear to help him, thou shalt surely help with him. Thou shalt not twist the judgment of thy poor in his cause. Keep thee far from a false matter and the innocent and righteous Slay thou not, for I will not justify the wicked. Now I want you to look down in verse number, verse number 12. <clears throat> Here it's a reiteration of the Sabbath. 
part of the covenant. Six days thou shalt do thy work, and on the seventh day thou shalt rest, that thine ox and thy donkey may rest, and the son of thy handmaid and the stranger may be refreshed. And in all things that I have said unto you, be circumspect, and make no mention of the name of other mighty ones, neither let it be heard out of thy mouth. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days, as I commanded thee in the time appointed of the month of Abib. For in it thou camest out from Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. And the feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field, that be Shavuot, or Pentecost. Uh, and the feast of end gathering, which is Sukkot, which is in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thy, thy labors out of the field. Three times in the year all thy males shall appear before the sovereign Yahweh. Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread, neither shall the fat of my sacrifice remain until the morning. The first of the first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring in, into the house of Yahweh thy Elohim. Thou shalt not see the kid in his mother's milk. Now I want to stop right there just for a second. All of this is in the covenant, okay? Now the Jews, they believe that you you can't have meat and cheese together or meat and milk products together. It's a violation of verse number 19. But that would not be a violation of verse number 19. That's not what that means. That's not, that has nothing to do with eating meat and cheese or meat and milk products together. Uh, if it did, then, uh, then in Genesis uh, chapter, let's see, in Genesis chapter number 18, look there in Genesis chapter number 18, then uh, Abraham would have been in violation of Yahweh's command. Genesis chapter 18 and verse number 8, where the, the uh, strangers, the angel of the Lord showed up, to speak to Abraham and to tell him about Isaac, that, uh, that Isaac was coming. And uh, verse number six says, uh, And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes upon the hearth. And Abraham ran into the herd and fetched a calf, tender and good, and gave it unto a young man, and he hasted to dress it. And he took butter and milk and the calf, which he had dressed and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. They ate meat, and they had milk, and they had butter. All, com all combination, all combined there, and so therefore the Jews are in incorrect. That's, that's rabbinicism. Has nothing to do with the truth of, of God's law and God's covenant. Has nothing to do with eating a cheeseburger. Amen? Verse number 20 of, of Exodus 23. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way. I believe that was an a, a, a early manifestation of, of Yeshua, Messiah. Uh, to keep thee in the way, to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. For mine angel shall go before, before thee. That, that's, that, that just simply means messenger. Shall go before thee and bring thee in, into, unto the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Thou shalt not bow down to their mighty ones, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. You shall serve Yahweh your Elohim, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. The, the number of thy days I will fulfill. I will send my fear before thee, and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. And I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee. And I will send hornets before thee, which shall drive out the Hivite, the Canaanite, the Hittite from before thee. And I will not drive them out from before thee in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beasts of the field multiply against thee. By little and little I will drive them out from before thee until thou be increased and inherit the land. I will set thy bounds from the Reed Sea, even unto the Sea of the Philistines, and from the desert unto the river, for I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and thou shalt drive them out before thee. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their mighty ones. They shall not dwell in thy land. 
lest they make thee sin against me, for if thou serve their mighty ones, I will surely be a snare unto thee. And so here, here, um, we see that uh, all of these things were in the covenant. Yes, Miss Peggy, that, that, that is correct. God does not hate those uh, uh, that obey his covenant. Yeah. So we see here that the, the covenant, the book of the covenant, are these three chapters and the instructions given by Yahweh for his people to operate in and to conduct themselves in their daily life. Now, when you look at the scriptures here, you see in chapter number 24, Israel promised to obey that covenant. Now, I want you to go back to Isaiah chapter 56, and I'm going to get, try to get to the message. What, what time is it, Miss Sharon? 921. I am not going to even get to the message tonight. Yeah, I am. I'm going to give you the points of the message, and then we're going to come back and we're going to look at them again next week. Isaiah chapter 56. Isaiah 56, verses 1 through 8. Those that enter into the covenant of Yahweh are found in this chapter, Isaiah 56, verses 1 through 8, and we're going to look at it. Yes, God hates disobedience, Miss Peggy. That is correct. God hates disobedience. So, those that enter into his covenant, I got eight points, and I'm going to give, I'm going to give them to you real quick, and then we're going to go back over them again next, next week. Number one, those that keep judgment, Number two, those that do justice. Number three, those that keep the Sabbath. Did you notice that the Sabbath and the feast days and holiness and righteousness are in the covenant? Everybody says, oh, well, the Sabbath is done away, away with. Oh, the feast days are done away with. No, 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 they were in the covenant. They were listed in the covenant, okay? To keep judgment, number one. Do justice, number two. Keep the Sabbath, number three. Avoid doing evil, number four. Choosing that which pleases Yahweh, number five. Serving Yahweh, number six. And how do we serve Yahweh? It's not by going to church on Sunday. It's by being obedient to him. That's how we serve him. The works that we are to do are the works of obedience that he's told us to do. That's how we serve him, by being obedient to his commands. Number six, to serve Yahweh. Number seven, to love the name of Yahweh. To love the name of Yahweh. Amen? And number eight, to take hold of the covenant. To take hold of the covenant. Now, we're going to deal with those a little bit more in depth next, next week. And hopefully we'll be able to get into the, to the third part, or the third point, shall I say. We just barely got into the second point. But notice the interesting part. All of those things that I read, those are in the covenant. That's not what Yeshua did away with. Yeshua didn't do away with the covenant. He said he's going to renew the covenant. He said, I will make a new covenant where I will put my laws and my commands and my statutes in their heart. He's not going to do away with the covenant. He's going to renew it. And they'll take it off the tables of stone and going to put it in their heart where it originally was. That's where it was with Abraham. Abraham had it in his heart. Enoch had it in his heart. Noah had it in his heart. These people had it in their heart to serve and love Yahweh, to love God. And the way that we love God and the way that we truly worship God is being obedient to his commandments and being obedient to his, to his laws. That's the ultimate form of worship is to be obedient. It's not by, by works of, 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 of our righteousness that Paul says. It's not by, by religious works and religious acts. It's not by, by doing the things that the Baptists tell you to do or that the Methodists tell you to do or that the Presbyterians tell you to do or the Catholics tell you to do. It's not by counting the rosary and, and praying over a statue of Mary. No, 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 no. Yes, that's what it means to be born again. Yes, thank you, Brother, uh, Brother Keith. That's exactly right. It's by doing what Yahweh has commanded us to do the highest form of worship is obedience. And the greatest thing that we can ever do, the greatest work that we can ever do is not a work that's defined by a church dogma or a church doctrine or a church 
uh, constitution. But the greatest work that we can ever do is the work that Yahweh told us to do. That's the greatest work that we can ever do is to just do what he asks us to do and what he commands us to do. Don't make up your own rules and your own works and, and your own things. Just do what God says to. Just do what Yahweh has commanded and let Elohim be right and let us be wrong. Amen? Amen? It's just that simple. If you love me, keep my commandments. That's exactly right. It's just that simple. We're going to stop right there for tonight. We're going to pick it up next week and we're going to hopefully try to bring this thing to a close next week. We're going to finish up the second point on those that enter into covenant. Go back and read Exodus chapter 20 through 24, and you'll understand what the covenant really was, the book of the covenant, and, uh, and you'll understand more about what Yeshua was talking about when he said, uh, uh, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I've not come to destroy the law, but to uphold it. Amen? Well, let's go to the book of Deuteronomy. We're going to read the Shema tonight. Uh, as we always do, Deuteronomy chapter number 6. I put my mezuzah up on my door tonight. And so I've got my mezuzah up on my doorpost coming into my house. And uh, so uh, uh, if you don't know what a mezuzah is, it's a, it's a, it's a little thing that's got a scroll, uh, a commandment scroll in it, a Torah scroll, a miniature tor Torah scroll. And you put it on your doorpost to fulfill Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse number 9. So Deuteronomy 6, verse 4 through 9, let's, uh, let's, let's read together. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh our Elohim is one, and thou shalt love Yahweh thy Elohim with all thine heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontless between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. And then in Numbers chapter 6, verse 24, 25, and 26, the blessing given to us by the Father. Yahweh bless thee and keep thee. Yahweh make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Yahweh lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Shalom, my friends. Have a great Sabbath. Get your rest. Do what the Father has commanded you to do. Honor him. Love him with all of your heart, soul, and mind. And he will bless you for it. He's promised you that he would. Shabbat Shalom. We'll see you next time. Have a great Sabbath. Join us tomorrow for, uh, for service. Two o'clock tomorrow afternoon, right, right here in our home. We hope to see you, see you there. Take care. Bye-bye.